All right, I think uh, I think we are live. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, someone would just wouldn't mind just uh, hitting me on a message there. Just to let me know that that audio is working. I would appreciate that. And I'm realizing that my camera, my microphone is not even plugged in, so we're probably on. Here, let me get this plugged in. <clears throat> Always, always the microphone. <laughs> last, last week I forgot to turn it on all together. Um, this week, hey there, all, all's good. Awesome, Marty. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Um, so I've got two, well, we're simultaneously broadcasting here. I've got my Facebook feeds going here. The webinar is going here. The webinar people, you're going to get my undivided attention. Facebook people. You've got to hit that link if you want to get over onto the webinar and actually see my screen. Uh, so that's the direction we're going. Uh, but I want to welcome you to the webinar. Uh, my name is Dr. Brady Wyrick, and today I'm going to share with you how to regenerate tissue and do it uh, without drugs and without surgery. Now, I'm guessing that for a lot of you, this is not your first go around when it comes to looking at surgical alternatives. I know there's a lot of different options that are out there. Uh, but the first thing I want to mention is that if you have failed with different alternatives in the past, that that's okay. okay? Those failures, you know, when you fail with injections, with medications, with supplements, um, just getting overall healthy in the past, it's not your fault. There's a lot of bad information that's out there. There's a lot of good information. Uh, Nathan, thanks on Facebook for letting me know you're working there. Uh, but what I want to share with you tonight is I, I just want to be uh, I want to be able to give you the good information, help help boil it down, or help narrow it down, and, um, and make it applicable to you. I know there's a lot of information overload that's out there that keeps you from from success. That's okay. Um, we're like I said, we're here to to narrow that down. So uh, if you're concerned that in the past that you just can't get healthy, you can't get well, or I put all the fears to rest, that you can do this. You just need someone, the right person, to actually explain it to you. Uh, if the big, you know, the big pharmaceutical companies and the FDA, for that matter, uh, they want you to think that you need a lot of medication and a lot of surgery to be healthy and to be well. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that that's not the case. Uh, they have their own reasons for wanting, uh, for wanting you to think that you need medication, you need surgery, etc. Um, but in a lot of cases, it's just it's just not true. Um, if you've ever thought that pharmaceutical corporations want you to fail, then you're probably right. They don't want you to succeed because it means that there's less money in their pockets. Um, so when you see some information that's out there about stem cell therapy and regenerative medicine, then that information sometimes can be can be watered down. So again, for you those people who are joining me on Facebook, if you click on that live, you can actually jump over to the um, the webinar where you can see my screen. I'll be sharing a, um, some slides here with you momentarily. Um, so that's what we're here for. Hey, we want to help you succeed. We want to help you get the right information. We know you have goals. We know you have aspirations. We know that you're missing out on doing some of the things that you wish you could do, and we're here to help you get that going. So um, without anything else being said, uh, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and start the slides here so we can talk about the information, and boom. You should still, now you should see me on the bottom, now you can see the screens that are there, and we can, we can get going. So my goal for this webinar is, uh, yes, Jeff, we're going to get to exosomes. Thank you. <laughs> My goal for this webinar, there's two parts of this. Okay, number one, for those people who want to know more, um, we're here to educate you. I know that there are people that their whole thing is they just want information, and that's why you're here. That's awesome. We're going to provide that information, so stick with us for the next few minutes. And then number two, is for those who are ready to set up a consultation, for those who are ready to take the next step, we're going to have a way for you to set up a consultation so that we can sit down and discuss the specifics of your case 
So we know whether or not this is the right fit for you. You can decide which direction you want to go. There should be over on the right column of your screen, there should be a, a button there. I believe the button is blue. This says schedule your consultation. Do not hit that yet. Um, we're going to get to that, but that's my purpose of being here is if you want the information, I'm going to give it to you. Uh, if you're ready to move forward, that button is there for a reason. And again, people on Facebook, if you hop over um, on that link, you can actually see the button that I'm, that I'm talking about. So that's why we're here. Those are the goals for this particular webinar. That all being said, let's rock and roll. I'm going to give you a little bit of my background. I've spent the last 13 years in Southeast Idaho, serving the Southeast Idaho community. And for the first about 11 and a half years, I practice what's called functional medicine and functional neurology, which means that I am a licensed chiropractor. And my practice consisted, or my practice consisted of um, people with chronic problems, chronic diseases that we help them get through by using, uh, by using food, uh, by having different exercises that help warm up or to help fire their nerves. Um, but in the last 18 months, the direction that we've steered towards has been regenerative medicine. Now, while we're still doing a little bit of the functional, functional medicine stuff on the side, um, and when we do these injections, you'll understand a little bit more about that, and I'll talk more in a minute. Um, but that's where we've been for the last year and a half. So in that year and a half time, uh, we've seen a lot of cases. What we've done is, in that time, we've done about two, over 250 of these injections. And <laughs> thanks, Rob. I appreciate that. People are being smart, Alex, on Facebook. Um, We've done about 250 of these injections, and I'm here to share with you tonight what we've learned um, over the, from the experience from those particular injections. And after doing this, you know, we've done more of these particular procedures in Southeast Idaho than anybody else. And after doing those, I'm going to share with you success stories. I'm going to share with you what we've learned, some successes, some failures. Um, but the experience that we've gained through that is um, what we're here, what we're here to share. So. That all being said, uh, let's talk a little bit about how this all started. It started with an epiphany. This guy on the screen that you see here, this is my dad. And for the first 12 or first 11 years of my practice, I spent a lot of time kind of banging my head against the wall because I saw my dad's health slowly doing this, slowly just nose diving. And he wasn't doing anything that I was asking him to do. It was very frustrating for me. So, you know, you see these people that you love, you see their health going downhill, and he's a lot like a lot of other people we see where they have some sort of chronic event happen, or excuse me, some sort of um, stressful event happen in their life. In his case, it was a car accident. After that car accident, his health, he just aged very, very quickly. And what ended up happening with him is by the time we started in the regenerative medicine practice, by the time I had that aha moment, this is what we need to be doing, uh, his health, his knees were both bone on bone. And two years ago, dad had scheduled both of his knees to be replaced. Now, when regenerative medicine came around, when stem cell injections were available to us, uh, dad was actually the first, he was the third person we injected. I was the first, my wife was the second, and then dad. Uh, he was one of the few people that we've had that actually get off the table feeling better. So as soon as they get injected, they actually feel better. We do see that happen on occasion, but he was one of them. And if you fast forward to today, just last weekend, Dad uh, rode his bike 27 miles. And I'm not talking about like an electric assist bike, I'm talking about a legit bicycle. He rode it 27 miles in Sun Valley. So he, you can tell he's happy and he's moving and he's mobile. And it's just been fantastic to see because you take that, you know, he was scheduled for that surgery and he was able to avoid that altogether. And there's a lot of other people that I'm going to share stories that I'm going to share with you uh, just like this that have been helped by the same types of therapy. So that's really why I got into this. I got into it because I knew it was going to help him. And that's where we went from there. Now, you heard Glenn. If you were here early enough, I played a little clip of testimonials. But you heard Glenn's story. His was real short. He basically said, yeah, my shoulder felt better within about two weeks. Well, there's a lot more to Sir Glenn's story, which I think is really cool. He's in the Idaho Air National Guard, so that's his part-time job. His full-time job is he is a, a service provider for a uh, for a local um, 
a gas company, excuse me. And for the Air National Guard, he's actually a crew chief on a Black Hawk helicopter, which means he sits in the back seat of the helicopter and monitors all the vital systems to make sure that helicopter can keep flying. And he loves to repel out of these helicopters. He likes to shoot the machine guns out of these helicopters. He absolutely loves his weekend job. And if he doesn't pass his PT test, his physical fitness test, physical training, uh, he can't fly. So it was really important to Glenn to not just avoid surgery, because if he, gets, if he has replacement surgery on his shoulder, he's out, but to have a minimized recovery time so he can pass the test and keep flying. So for Glenn's case, he, was better about, he felt better about two, two and a half weeks, and he continues to do better. He's passed his PT test, and he's continuing to fly. So he's thrilled about that. We're, thr we're thrilled for Glenn. Um, the other one, I want to share with you Rudy's story. Rudy is in his 50s, and he was also a shoulder case where he had an osteoarthritic shoulder. His shoulder was keeping him from sleeping and keeping him from working out. And so he obviously wanted to change that, so we did an injection for him in his shoulder, and he did remarkably well. And Jeff, here comes your exosome story, but if you were on the webinar, you can see the picture. This is Anna. Anna is a uh, one of our, she's one of our systemic cases. So she has something called, she has fibromyalgia, and she has um, psoriatic arthritis. You're gonna hear a little bit more of Anna's story. Uh, but we were able to help her after 10 years of suffering, basically what she, her husband said when she came back was, after 10 years, I feel like I have my wife back. So we're really thrilled. We're gonna talk about how that happened for Anna. And again, for those of you on Facebook, the link is in the description. You can actually jump over to the actual webinar so you can see my screen so you can see these pictures. So those are a few stories. I know you're thinking to yourself, well, what about me? This is great for these people. What, how's that going to apply for me? And the answer to that is we really don't know until we have that chance to sit down and talk. That's why I've got that offer button that's up there on the screen. You can schedule an appointment with us and just so we can talk about your case. She says, click here to register. If you click on it, don't do it yet. Let's get through the information first. Um, but let's jump in back into the rest of the, top, the, the presentation here. So the first question is, what is a stem cell? We want to make sure we define this before we move on. The best definition that I've been given for a stem cell that I've heard was actually given to me from a patient of mine that said a stem cell is a um, blank slate cell. Let me share with you what that means. So a blank slate, when you think about a blank slate, what do you think of? Uh, you think a blank slate, a blank piece of paper, what can I do with a blank piece of paper? Well, you can literally do anything with a blank slate. So right now inside of your body, inside about every one of your tissues, you have stem cells that are blank slate cells that your butt, this is your body's natural reparative mechanism. So these stem cells are hanging out inside of your, inside of your tissue and they are waiting for your body to be injured, to get sick, or to have tissue that's breaking down. And when that happens, your body can use these to become whatever the body needs them to become to knock the inflammation down, start repairing that tissue, and actually regrow and regenerate new tissue. Now, there's nothing in medicine we know of that does this until now. And that's why this is so exciting for us, is that this is the cutting edge. This is where medicine going, is going, and in my opinion. This is the greatest discovery in medicine that we've had since penicillin. The fact that we can utilize these stem cells and stem cell exosomes to create and to regrow new tissue to me, this is what keeps me keeps me awake at night. So we're gonna have a few examples of this, but again, your body, you are born with your stem cells. So when you are born, you have a number of, you have, you have about one out of 10,000 cells that you have is an actual stem cell. And as you age, that number drastically drops off. So at birth, you got one out of 10,000 cells as a stem cell. And by the time you hit the age of 80, it drops all the way down to about one out of every two million. So when people ask me about, well, can I just use my own stem cells? Why can't you use your stem cells? The short answer is you can, but now we know after, you know, 2006 is when really you started, people started using their own stem cells, but now we are in 2019, more and more research is leading to the fact that stem cells that come 
from donated umbilical cords are the most powerful stem cells that we know about that we can utilize. We're going to talk about the details as to why. But mainly it has to do with replication rate and with division. Because if you take one stem cell at birth, so a stem cell that's donated from donated umbilical cord, that stem cell is going to replicate every 28 hours versus if you're the age 65, that replication rate drops all the way down to every 65 hours. And when it comes to regenerating and regrowing new tissue, that is a huge difference. That is the difference between this working for you and this not working for you. Uh, so we're going to discuss that in detail when we start talking about the, um, the big three secrets about stem cell therapy and regenerative medicine. So just to recap, what is a stem cell? It is your body's own natural reparative mechanism. They are released in response to injury or stress. These stem cells have the ability to hone in on the site of injury. And on the webcast, I just showed a picture of a fighter jet launching a guided missile because I think of these stem cells as being like guided missiles. Hey, a guided missile is going to lock onto its target. It's going to go hone in on that target. These stem cells do very much the same thing. The inflammation being released by that injury is a chemical messenger saying, hey, stem cell, come here. I'm your target. Those stem cells go to that target, and then they have a reaction, a biochemical reaction called a parikin reaction, where they reduce the inflammation, modulate your immune system, and regenerate and regrow new tissue. I'm going to say that one more time because it's extremely important. Number one, they reduce inflammation. Number two, they modulate and control your immune system. And number three, they actually regenerate and regrow new tissue. So. That takes us right into the bulk of this. Now that we know what a stem cell is, here are the big three secrets about stem cell therapy. These are the three things that you absolutely have to know for this to be successful for you. Number one, a stem cell therapy does not come from dead babies. Take that thought out of your head, out of your mind. We're gonna go into detail about why it's just not true. Uh, but there's a lot of media sources, you know, they want you to believe this because it's controversial. Controversial, controversy gets views and views get advertiser dollars from big pharma. And those advertisers, when they know the truth of this, they're going to lose sales because they know that this is what is happening. They know this is the future of medicine and that we're helping people that they can. So there's a little, you know, the, the, the little secret to this is that the safest, most effective stem cells that are available, they actually come from donated tissue, which is really the sad thing about this donated tissue is that only 97% of live births in the United States, only 3% get used. That means 97% of that tissue gets thrown away. Okay, so secret number one is that stem cell therapy does not come from dead babies. Secret number two is that stem cell therapy works the best with bone on bone joints. We've got a lot of people, in fact, just today I published a success story from a lady with an osteoarthritic spine. Her doctor did not want her to do stem cell therapy for whatever reason, but a lot of it has to do with education and with lack of information, with lack of training, because they're kind of stuck in that model of there's nothing we can do to help you regenerate regrow your tissue, especially with these bone-on-bone -bone cases. And again, after a year and a half and after 250 of these injections, we were just seeing that's just not true. And we've got some, some research articles to back us up on that. So next thing is that you don't have to be rich and famous to afford regenerative medicine. We will talk about the pricing of this tonight in this webinar. Uh, but what most people we're seeing is that we can do this for a little bit less than what people's deductibles even are. So even though it's not covered by insurance, it's not covered by Medicare, we will get into the pricing of regenerative medicine. Uh, but just to be clear, we do have folks that do fly their private jets into Idaho Falls to get this done. So that does happen. So those are the three secrets. We're going to spend the bulk of our remaining time together talking about those three secrets. So let's dive right in. Uh, just a reminder for your Facebook folks that are still with me. You can actually hop onto the webinar by clicking on the link and it'll take you so you can see my screen and I'll be talking straight to you rather than over here to this screen. So stem cell, the secret number one, stem cell therapy does not come from dead babies. Um, just to be clear, embryonic stem cells are used only for research. Embryonic stem cells come from when the, um, 
when an egg is fertilized to, from two weeks after fertilization, that is considered an embryo. Now, there's a lot of people who have this idea that stem cell therapy is coming from those embryos that is coming from aborted fetal tissue, and they just could not be more wrong. Hey, embryonic stem cells never have been used for treatment. They never will be used for treatment because they're dangerous. They can literally become any tissue inside of the body. So when you hear these crazy stories about people growing things they shouldn't in places that they shouldn't, they're probably using embryonic stem cells from not this country. Uh, they actually come, these stem cells will actually come from fertility clinics where hopeful parents will go into a clinic and they get a dozen eggs fertilized, the mom gets four of them implanted back into her, and the other eight have, they have options for those other eight. They can freeze them and keep them for themselves. They can freeze them, and don't tell me you can't freeze stem cells because we're freezing embryos, and we're giving up those embryos for adoption to other couples. I think that's, that just blows my mind that you can do that, but I think it's the coolest thing ever. So they can freeze them, keep them themselves, they can donate them for other couples to adopt, or they can donate them to science where they're used for things like um, like the flu shot, like uh, immunizations. A lot of embryonic stem cells are used in, in, uh, in, um, in immunization research. And it always makes me laugh because someone will take a shot at me on Facebook and say, oh, you're using dead babies. Well, you know, the reality is that the flu shot that you got last year had more embryonic stem cells in it than what the therapy, the cells that we use for therapy. So. The next one is this notion that we're using aborted fetal tissue, and that also couldn't be more wrong. Um, aborted fetal tissue, it's illegal to use in this country. It's immoral, and again, it's dangerous, so it just doesn't happen. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to get into that issue because it's just, we don't use them, it's illegal. I hear about people going out of the country, going to Mexico to do fetal, uh, more to fetal. I, slap my, I just kind of shake my head. So uh, I just want to be clear about those two things. Now, going back and touching on autologous stem cells or using your own stem cells, we consider this first generation stem cell therapy. This happened first, it's been going on, like I said, since about 2006. And if you think about technology, you know, you've got a first generation, you've got a second generation, we're on a third generation. We're now on our third generation. So first generation, using your own stem cells is yesterday's news. It's not as effective. It's more expensive. Uh, it's still cool. Like, you can still help people with it. Uh, but it's just not, it's not the best there is anymore. We've got research to back it up. Uh, research now shows that our own stem cells are not effective, as effective due to age. That's because of increased inflammatory markers. That is increase. That is because of um, their they they die off faster, uh, and those stem cells just aren't as robust. They're not. They don't replicate as fast, etc. And Nathan Sams, I can see your question, buddy. I'm going to get to that. I promise. I just want to try to get through this information. I'm not ignoring you. Um, so now the research is all showing the most effective stem cells are coming from donated umbilical cords. So. So where are the studies? Here's a great study of intraarticular injection of mesenchymal stem cells for the treatment of osteoarthritis of the knee. In this particular study, they found that in the 18 participants, that they improved function um, and pain they, of the knee joint without causing adverse events and reduced cartilage. I love this. Reduced cartilage defects by regeneration of hyaline-like articular cartilage. So here's a research study that flat out says with mesenchymal stem cell injections, you can grow new tissue uh, and new cartilage. So there is, um, there are papers to back it up. We see this in our real life actual patients. This is Tom. Uh, Tom came to us a little over a year ago. Tom was 40 at the time. And he needed to have, a, or he was told he needed to have a, a, a knee replacement. And so what happened with Tom was we did the injection for him. He was, a, he's self-employed. He runs a pest control company. The guy works like crazy, so he does not have time to take off of work, to rehabilitate all the steps that would be involved in a joint replacement surgery. Uh, Tom has done very, very well. He's extremely happy, and he's, uh, it's just, he's, he's a walking, uh, he, 
He's a walking evangelist for our clinic. I love it. In fact, most of our uh, most of our people actually come from uh, referrals from guys like Tom. So that's what it looks like in real life. Um, and again, Nathan, I will explain a little bit more what that looks like here in just a bit. Um, but it takes us to secret number two. And secret number two is that stem cell therapy works the best on vulnerable joints. So we see this time and time again where someone goes in and, my, and I, someone will come in or someone will call me and they'll say, well, my doctor says that I need that my knees are bone on bone and I have to, I have, to have surgery. There's no other options. Uh, this happened to a very good friend of mine, a colleague. Um, he actually broke his hip. And this colleague of mine, he, he practices in North Carolina, and he's got a clinic just like mine. So he's got access to the information that I do. He's got access to the cells that I do. And he knew that he did not want to have surgery. He wanted to do the stem cell injection. So he goes to his buddy that's an orthopedic surgeon. And what does his orthopedic surgeon want to do? Of course, he wants to replace his hip. Well, Ron does the injection. You fast forward about six weeks. It's like he's walking on a new hip. Uh, so, yeah, there is an attitude that you'll get from surgeons that will say, well, you have to have surgery. Either you're, what you're doing is unethical or don't do it or, or whatever. But we hear people that say, my doctor says that this is what I have to do. And we're here to help understand that, no, not necessarily. So, Nathan, I'm coming back to you, buddy. This is, um, this is what you were asking me about. What are the steps from start to finish for the knees inje uh, for knee injections? So this is an actual case study for one of our or for one of my colleagues, where a 54 year old male walks into the office. And so what will typically happen is our injection days are on Sunday or on Thursdays. So our medical team will have you stop taking your um, anti-inflammatories on Sunday, so that we can do the injection on Thursday because we do want you nice and inflamed. And then on injection day, what will happen is our nurse practitioner will meet with you and they'll do the injection into this particular knee. So on the, the, on the left side of your screen, you can see the before, and the top part of the knee and the bottom part of the knee, there's a 2.8 millimeter gap between those two. Okay. So the nurse practitioner went on the opposite side where the gap is bigger and they injected 1.1 million of these stem cells into that knee capsule. And if you look at the picture in the middle, that picture was taken four weeks after the initial injection. So the space has gone from 2.8 millimeters to 5.3 millimeters in just four weeks. And the reason why it's done that is because that knee or those cells were replicating about every 28 hours. So if you take 1.1 million stem cells and you put them in the knee joint, in 28 hours, you should have double that amount because they replicate. And then double them again, and then double them again. There's, there's research that suggests that in, in um, studies that say that these will keep replicating for a life cycle about 65 replications. So if you go over here on the right side of the screen, and you can see on the right side of the screen that that space has gone from 2.8 millimeters to 6.1 millimeters in just eight weeks time because these cells are regenerating their regrowing new tissue. So start to finish, Nathan, for this individual, it was come in, you, know, you do a consultation with me or with my staff, then you'll meet with a nurse practitioner, the nurse practitioner performs the injection, and then we sit back and we play the hurry up and wait game. Yes, there are some steps that we'll tell we can take in the meantime to help that replication move along faster. We'll talk about that some other time. But that's basically perform the injection. Um, there's not a lot of downtime, if any. You do have to take it easy for a little bit, but that's basically what you're asking me. Um, so I hope that answers your question. So in this particular case, the joint space more than doubled because of those stem cells. And the difference between the knee on the right and the knee on the left of your screen isn't just pain, but it's also, it's also increased mobility. And increased mobility is, uh, is a big deal because moving joints are happy joints and moving joints are going to last a whole lot longer. So there's that case study, which um, brings us back around because there are some of you that are probably thinking, I don't have arthritis. I have some other condition like an autoimmune condition or some other systemic condition. And right now there's about 6,000 studies going on worldwide. And this is for you, Jeff. 
these studies are starting to point more and more towards what are called stem cell exosomes. So they are the cells that we talked about, these blank slate cells. They release these packets of information that will go to the cells and have their biochemical effect on those, on those cells. So what we're finding are that are conditions that are, that are inflammatory, that are degenerative, they're actually being, um, these cells are helping to reverse the inflammation, start regenerating re and regrowing new tissue. And, you know, we've seen a lot of different cases of things come through this office, but these are the more of the systemic people that we can use exosomes and IV therapy. And here's a perfect, perfect couple of case studies. We've already talked about um, Anna, but on the right side of your screen is um, another case of a gentleman named George. He came into our office, and what you see with George there is what's called psoriasis. And that is George's immune system attacking his knees and breaking down the, the skin on his knees. That was happening all over his elbow, all over his trunk, all over his butt. Uh, but it was because of the stem cells, the exosomes, actions that you're able to see that picture on the top. That was from injection day. And the picture down below is 14 weeks after his injection or his, his IV. That's what happened with George. So typically what will happen on these cases that are other than osteoarthritis is during our consultation, we will talk about, you know, number one, does your condition have an inflammatory component? Number two, is there an immune system component? And number three, is there a, uh, is there a part that needs to be regenerated? And the answer to all three of those is typically yes. Uh, and that's where we would talk about maybe do some IV therapy with stem cell exosomes. So that's the direction we're going there with exosomes. Okay, so that takes us to secret number three where you don't have to be rich and famous to afford regenerative medicine. There's a couple of points that I want to make here. Um, I know you're, you want me to get the point. You want to know how much it costs. I get that. But you have to consider the average cost of joint replacement in the United States is $57,000 per joint. Now, I do understand and I do realize that this is going to depend on your insurance coverage. Um, for those of you who aren't on Medicare, uh, what you're going to see is having is having regenerative medicine done for your joints actually probably less than your deductible. But for the, that doesn't account for those who are on Medicare because they do pay less for it. But what's not accounted for is it doesn't account for your time off of work. How much work are you going to miss? Or if you're retired, how many of your activities are you going to miss because you're laid up, because you're rehabilitating? Um, we just, we can't account for those things. We can't assign a value to those things. Uh, we just know that, it did, that joint replacement surgery and the recovery time does affect your quality of life. It also doesn't account for the time or the cost of rehabilitation in that number. So joint replacement therapy, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a financial cost to it. But there's also a, you got to consider the complications and side effects because those aren't accounted for as well. So we'll talk about those. We can talk about the actual cost of regenerative medicine. It starts with PRP. I haven't mentioned a whole lot about PRP yet tonight. Uh, PRP is protein, excuse me, platelet-rich plasma. This is where we actually take your blood and we spin it down and all the solid material will sink to the bottom of the vial and all of the plasma will stay at the top. We'll take that plasma, we can actually reinsert, re-inject it back into your joint. So we've done really well with doing this. Um, but this is a, this can be a standalone therapy if you're under the age of 50. If you're over the age of 50, this may or may not work for you. But what we're finding is using it in conjunction with stem cell therapy is actually getting us the results that we want a little bit quicker. So there's PRP, stem cell therapy itself starts at 4250, 4250 per joint. Okay, so if you do one joint, that's the cost. If you do two, it adds $2,500. Um, you can do one joint now. You can do one joint down the road. The disc, if you do it that way, we will give you a discount. It won't be as big as if you should do them both at one time. But this is why I want to have this consultation together so we can talk about uh, what your options look like and where we need to go from here. Lastly is... Um, if we do exosomes, if we do four cc's of systemic exosomes, so if you're coming to inform me that something, to me for something that's a little bit more systemic, we're going to talk about doing an IV of exosomes, which is 4850. If you do an IV on top of doing a joint, and we'll talk in your uh, consultation about when we would do that, 
it adds another 2750. And the reason why we do that is if your joint is inflamed, you can guarantee that there's other parts in your other parts of your body that are inflamed and doing a systemic IV on top of your joint can be very, very helpful. Um, so that's why that's there. And then lastly, our payment options are cash, check, or credit card. You can use your health savings, can't you can use your financing. Uh, we do have some financing options that are available. So those are there. That's it. That, those are the, uh, the costs are for stem cell therapy. These are listed on my website. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to talk about with secret number three, and mainly it's this. If you can't afford the financing or you can't afford the injection, then don't do it. And the reason why I say it like that is because if you do this and it takes up all of your money, you're, it's going to increase your stress stress response and increased stress response is going to make it so that it lessens our chances of this working for you. So when we talk, when we do this consultation, we will discuss that in detail. Uh, but most people that we see, they use credit cards or care checks. Most of the people that we see are working class people, meaning they're still at work, they can't miss work. And we can typically, depending on what their job is, get them back to work very, very quickly. Most of our people uh, go on, they get injected on Thursday and they go back to work on Monday. So the point is, I just want to talk. I want to see if it's a good fit. So I want to cover just a couple other frequently asked questions before we call it a night and jump into the uh, to the offer part of this. Number one, does it hurt? Well, it is an injection. We do put a needle in your body. So yes, it is a needle. It can hurt, but typically what will happen is that the night of the injection will be very sore, and within 24 hours, it starts to uh, that sore starts to wear off. Next question we get is how long will it last? And the answer to that is uh, we're seeing research now that's from five to seven years. We're seeing other research from other countries that's saying um, 10 to 15 years. But how long it lasts, I won't look you in the eye and give you a number. And the reason why I won't do that is because it's going to depend entirely on how you take care of yourself. It depends on the individual. So we can discuss that in your consultation as well. And then lastly, um, what should I expect? Again, when we do these injections, it's usually the first 24 to 48 hours, people are pretty sore. And it's not until about six to eight weeks out, just to be clear that we see people doing a whole lot better. I can see a lot more people jumping on um, Facebook. For you folks on Facebook, there's a link where you can actually get onto the webinar. You can see the screen that I'm talking about. Uh, but that's typically what we tell people to expect. So from the day of injection, from from that day, about six to eight weeks out is really where we start to see a difference. The sweet spot is about that six to nine month mark. So that takes us to the question, is stem cell therapy right for you? Well, number one, that's going to depend on your overall health status. So when we do the consultation, we're going to talk about things like um, your height, your weight, what medication you're on, what disease processes are happening inside of your body. So we'll discuss those to make sure we don't have anything that could prevent this from being a good fit for you. Uh, number two, we'll talk about your mental mindset. This is a big thing. Uh, if you think this is a waste of time and a waste of money, guess what it's going to be? A waste of time and a waste of money. And if you've gotten this far into the webinar and you're still here, I can tell that your mental mindset's not there. <laughs> so that's a good thing. And then lastly, the financial part of it, does it financially work for you, does it not? Um, those are the questions that we're going to answer for you on this consultation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the folks on Facebook off. Uh, we're going to end the live video here. For you people that are on the actual webinar, for Facebook, if you click on that link, you can jump over to the webinar. Um, we're going to wrap up talking about on this webinar. So Facebook, thanks for joining me, and I will catch you guys later. For you people on the webinar, uh, this slide represents how most of you feel, and I completely understand that. Hey, it feels like you are trying to drink out of a fire hose right now because I've gone for 47 minutes. I've covered a, an incredible amount of information. I want to, there's just no way to boil it down for you other than just dump it on you. So if you're feeling like this right now, you're not alone. But we want to talk about what the next step is. And the next step is to actually schedule a consultation. Now, I'm not going to get into this offer without your permission because what I'd like to do is for those people that have joined us that just want information, I've provided that. 
For those people that have want to take the next step, I'm going to take the next few minutes because I've got an offer here that um, I think is a pretty dang good offer that gives you a ton of value. And I want to go through and just take a couple minutes to go through that. So if that's all right with you, let's jump right into it. Number one is I'm going to give you that consultation for free. Uh, if you'll just click on that button, it should be on the right of your screen that says um, schedule your consult. That button um, shortly here will be the time to actually hit that button. And what I'll do inside of the chat is let me drop you guys a link in there as well. Give me just a second. There we are. So I'm going to put this in to the messages as well so you have the link. So if you click on that link, what it'll do is it's going to take you to my calendar and you can actually schedule this consultation one-on-one. -on -one. And if you do that, we're going to do it for free. That's $125 value. The next thing we're going to do, well, excuse me, during that consultation, number one is we want to talk about what is your goal? What are you hoping to accomplish? Number two, how are we going to help you accomplish that? It's going to be an IV, it's going to be an injection, it's going to be both. Number three, let's talk about the cost options. What does that look like for you? And then answer all your questions. And of course, we want to have your spouse involved because it's the big decision, we understand that. But the second thing we're going to do is we're going to give you on your injection day a printed copy of your health handbook. This is a book that I helped develop with US Enzymes. So when I talk about functional medicine, this is the, the, uh, the protocol that we use. So this book is menus, recipes, shopping lists to help you reduce inflammation, to help you lose weight, to help you get that pressure off of your joints. We don't give this to you until injection day because on injection day, we do want you as inflamed as possible, but we'll give this to you so you have the information so you can take the necessary steps to make sure that when we do that injection for you, you get the most value out of that injection. So I put it in here as a $59 value, and I think it's worth a heck of a lot more than that. But we're also going to give you a $450 voucher off your first injection, so that'll save you $450. And then we're also going to include PRP when you do stem cells. So if you do a stem cell injection, we're going to go ahead and include the PRP at no extra charge. That's going to save about $750 to do that. And then if you decide to do an exosome on top of that, then we're going to give you a 20% discount on that as well. So there's a lot of things here. It's a, a total value of $1,934. That's a hook. I want you to get on my schedule. I want to sit down and talk with you so that we can find out whether or not this is a good fit for you. Uh, I appreciate you guys. You've been here for almost an hour with me. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. And now is the time to get on my schedule. Our